Hello, everyone. Welcome to Things Have Your Do It Yourself Stock Strategies, Season 1, Episode 1. This is your host, Adivet Standard. In these uh, episodes, we're going to talk to some of the traders who have a proven uh, track record. And uh, we try to take their insight into the markets and um, try to understand their strategies. In this episode, I have um, one of our uh, top uh, traders, Srikant. Uh, who has been very profitable in his options uh, strategies, uh, both um, calls and puts. We tried to take his insight into the market and uh, understand um, his strategies. So if anyone of us are interested in those strategies, we can understand and uh, follow them. So let me invite um, Srikant. Srikant, thank you so much for taking time and uh, joining this session. Hi, Vishwa. Yeah, it's a pleasure to join in this discussion. Happy to share whatever that I can. Sure. So uh, Shrikan, could you please um, help us with your trading journey, how you started and um, how you how you have learned your strategies and expertise in stock market and options? Sure. Uh, sure. So um, I started my stock trading back in 2014, 15, I guess. So um, I was doing just stocks, options. I, I have no clue. Even now, I, I, I don't have uh, much of uh, knowledge in options. It might be surprising, but I can explain that on, uh, on that later. But I started with stocks, I mostly penny stocks. I'm very um, hesitant to do um, anything more than um, $5 uh, at that time because I have no clue. I don't know anything. I don't know what stock is. Uh, what is the meaning of stock? What is the definition? That's how I started when I started. So it's just a curiosity of uh, stock market. Like everybody, it was so scary from outside um, that uh, when I joined first, when I opened the account, um, I deposited, I think $10 or $50, I guess. That's, that's what I started with because I have no clue, but it was so scary because everybody around me told me that uh, stock market is, is about only crash and uh, only um, like huge, um, very knowledgeable PhD uh, or any anybody who is in the field can survive, uh, economic experts can survive in stock market. That's, that's the image that I got when I joined. Um, but I slowly learned about that. The, far, the good thing about that is, um, uh, like all, I started reading the news um, and uh, anything that comes that way and started to react to every news. Um, that's how I started. But uh, basically, I started to read news. That's uh, one good thing that I'm still following, but um, that helped me a lot in developing my strategy. So that's, my, that's how I may started. Um, but uh, COVID actually pull me into options and things like that, which I can explain later. But um, to start with, yes, that's how my career started in stocks. So you, you started in uh, the year 2014 and 15. You started with penny stocks under $5. And when, so when you started, when were you actually profitable? Were you profitable from day one or how did, how did it all work? Uh, like I said, so I was carried to enter the stock market. So um, without knowing anything, I wouldn't invest on any stock. So I was very cautious in whatever that I've been entering. So initial days, I was uh, I, I didn't do a lot of trades. It's basically probably, I think till uh, year 2017, I guess, or even 2018, 20, or even more than that, I think till 2019, I don't trade every day. I trade not every day, not, not every month, I would say. It's like I buy the stocks, I keep it, that's it. I don't change any of my profile or I don't uh, buy and sell immediately. I wait for it. So to answer a question, I was profitable. There were few which was not moving, but Basically, I was not looking at profit or loss. I was just accumulating as a habit of collectibles. So uh, if you can uh, imagine people like different, uh, have different types of hobbies. One of my hobbies was to pick the best of stocks and to 
keep on adding to it whenever i get opportunity that's that's how i started so till 2019 i guess i was not making i, I was not selling i was not doing trades every day so i was profitable at one point um before i entered into the options my first my profile was 100% 120% profit so so i was never into the loss uh, strategy when i was doing stocks so this is this is uh, when did you start options which year was it to uh, it was a, i'm a covid child uh, when it comes to options <laughs> i started a little bit before but uh, mostly covid uh, 2020 march time um that's when i entered heavily into options but before that it was just uh, mostly i think end of 20 um 19 probably or mid of 2019 is probably when I started options, but heavily from 2020 um, March. March. Okay. So, so you started in 2014, and by end of 2019, your portfolio is up 120%. You mainly used to buy stocks under five dollars. And no, can no. I? Sorry, sorry to interrupt. No, no, I was not. I was initially buying it for five dollars, but then I okay. changed the strategy over the period of time. I think probably. Uh, once I know uh, that's like, sorry, uh, uh, I, I should have added this uh, detail. So um, once I know what a stock market is, how it works, so what to buy, what to, what to, uh, what not to buy those things. I started a uh, little bit more. Uh, I started to $5, $10 stocks, $100 stocks, things. I don't go to $100. I didn't go to $100 stocks till at a later point, by probably around 2018 or 20, 2018, later off or 2019 early till that time, I didn't go for like $500, $400 or even $200 stocks. But uh, I was making $50, $100 stocks gradually uh, until that point. So in 2018, when you shifted from not knowing much to knowing something, and then you were reading news and you were actually you know, increasing. So when you made the transition from... Um, you know, stocks under five dollars to stocks above fifty dollars, hundred dollars. So you are following news. Um, you have learned some stuff. You, you thought like, okay, I need to probably buy quality stocks. And um, was was the company fundamentals criteria for you, or is there anything else that made you buy the stocks that uh, made you profitable from twenty eighteen till end of twenty twenty? Um, uh, you were cutting out after the fundamentals, I guess, fundamentals and what are the other factors that you are looking for? No, the, the, the fundamentals and um, my question is like when you started in 2014 and when you progressed into um, from $5 stocks to $50 or $100 stocks, what is the main criteria you're looking in a particular stock when you're picking um, after 2018? Is it the fundamentals or news? How are you picking the stocks after 2018? Uh, uh, slight correction, not after 2018, but uh, even before that, I moved a little bit more. So 2018 is when I have started heavily with, a, with, with uh, I, I plan not to buy any penny stocks except the pharma ones. But uh, to answer question, so when I started, so again, going back to my initial journey, so I was not sure. I was just reading the news and basically the articles that, uh, that's, that, uh, comes in my way, I cross verify in few places. That's how I started. But uh, then I understood um, after some point, I understood that all the news are to be taken and all the um, positive hypes or the, the upgrades or downgrades are really, uh, it's not mat does not matter a stock. I found out that around uh, like after one, one and a half years. So then I started, okay, though you have a solid stock so it can go down not because of a particular factor but it's because of particular news so i i found out that and then i started trading basically looking at what does the future look like i till today that's that's my prime and only uh, important factor for picking up any stocks or even options for it uh, sake so i Pick a stock based on, okay, where is it in the market? What is it for the next six months, one year, five years, 
um, things like that. Five years is not uh, doesn't matter um, if um, if you're doing options or even stocks because you expect a company to be good five years, but uh, that's that's not a good uh, um, um, level to to have it. But it it's a future future futuristic perspective. How good it is. So basically, you should have at least a one to year one to two years of um visual on how the stock would perform whenever you are entering into a long term so so that how do you know so which field is important what is that doing and how do you think that particular stock will behave basically i pick a stock say for example um lazr um that comes to my mind i don't know why but uh, that comes to my mind immediately or chpd um or um yeah these two stocks i picked it when it was in spac merger so that day from that day i have it i think it's uh, stpk or something if i remember correctly that's chpd before uh, spac acquisition so that was 10 dollars and then there were a lot of talks that this is going to be huge and things like that so i i pick a stock i keep it in my radar i don't buy it immediately um i pick it, i keep it in my radar so i have uh, multiple um, reminders for me on what stock to buy when to buy or what stock to buy um what to track keep track of it so first news i read it when i read up, read about a stock i i see okay okay this slow, this looks interesting and promising so what's going to be the future let's see then i will read um, I will keep a tab of it, and um, I have a Seeking Alpha subscription as well. That's one of the source that I always look for. Um, Seeking Alpha, not just uh, not to focus on analyst reviews, but um, just to focus on the news that's coming. That's the prime thing. Even today, when things have your latest news populates every day, I look for my pick of stocks. So that's how I started. So I I pick a stock, I keep a tab of it. And I start reading about the news for like probably 15 days or 20 days, or maybe more than that, or sometimes it's six months. I will just keep on waiting till I find a best time to enter in the stock. It may be best time in the sense, okay, I I have um, um, money now and I can enter, that's this the time. So it's not about the stock, whether it's high or low, I don't worry about that, but I, wait for some time and i when i really know okay fine this is getting focus for the past 3 months or 3 weeks or whatever the time it is then i decide okay this is the time that i'm going to enter so that's how i pick a stock and um, i enter into it that's one one method of picking the stocks i have a couple of more as well okay so do you when you are doing this or even you continue to do this uh, I have a couple of questions um, before we move into options. Um, do you look at the price action on a chart is, is the question one. And um, when you look at these news, there will be like a lot of companies that you will have news reported on. How do you sort and like how, it's going to take a lot of time if you have to read every single news out there. How do you basically sort it and how do you basically catch the top picks in all the news out there. There'll be like hundreds of tickers that will be reporting news, right? How right. do you filter it? Right. So like I said, uh, um, I have a handful of tickers that I, uh, first of all, to answer your first question, technical, technical charts and other things. I'm, uh, I'm close to zero in technicals. I'm learning from you. And uh, I attended a session before too. I know a little bit about technical, but uh, my way of looking a chart, whether it's bottomed or whether it's going to go high, it's just based on two things. One, if it's going down, I see what possible level it can go based on the five-year chart or one-year chart, whichever the range is. Um, so that I use, um, say for example, Netflix, the recent one, I picked uh, 410 as a low because I thought 410 is a, is a natural support. I call it as a natural support because it's not on any chart, like I said, so I'm not, um, I have very, 
I like said very little knowledge in the chat. So I'm trying to learn to better trade, uh, better put my trades. But um, I go from the natural view of the chart, basically by seeing the chart, what possibly the lowest or natural support it has. Um, high, I don't know. I just believe that it will go, and I'm I don't sell immediately on the stocks perspective so i i keep it for long some of my trades are like um are like when i when i initially bought it i still have it i i don't sell so i haven't sold it yet so that's the high and low of how we pick but technically i'm very poor so, right. so yeah so that answers the first one and uh, the second one is mm -hmm. like all the news out there how do you pick one or two or three right right so i just focus on um the area say for example we have sectors right so i pick i try to spread my picks okay that gives a comfort zone when a sector is doing good and when a sector is not doing good say for example i pick banking i pick technology i pick semis ev um and then energy um what else pharma so to name a few so i i see how the news is coming out for a thing so, so for example pharma there are n number of pharmas how do you pick some there are few uh, which which looks really promising in that area say for example uh, when chewy c h e w y i guess uh, c h w y picker when that was going high during the COVID times, I was really interested because how come this can go this big? But then I picked a few tickers after that. Say, for example, OOF, W-O-O-F, Petco Wellness Insurance. And then one is uh, BARK, B-A-R-K, right, subscription, yeah. for, mm -hmm. subscription yeah. for um, pet food. So I looked into those two. When Chewy can go to $67, why not Woof or Bark? So I started, when I, I, I read something about that. In fact, actually more than Chewy and more than other things, Bark has more subscriptions, but stock market hasn't paid attention. So I, I, I kept a tab of it um, and I focus on those two stocks. I know that CHWA went very well. So I kept a, a tab on that, and at point at one point I entered into both both of them with a the minimum stocks. When I say, for example, if I plan to invest hundred, so I just enter maybe twenty. So and then if it goes up or down, if it goes down, I will wait for some percentage, and then I will add on it. And then if it goes up, I will uh, wait for the down, and then I'll add it again. To answer your question, I'll pick each ticker. In, in a particular area, when it, when the news comes out of it, there are a lot of sources that's that's out there. So there are people who are writing about it. More than that, when I read about an article, I read the comments as well to some extent. Uh, not paying close attention to it, not not uh, fully um, giving credit to them. At least their view of a particular stock. So I read that as well. So that gives me an idea. Okay, really uh, the people. The analyst who has written is agreed by most or not agreed by most. So that gives a general perspective of it. So where do you read these comments? I'm sorry. Um, is it in uh, Seeking Alpha or is it, is it somewhere else? Seeking Alpha is one source of mine. I okay. read about, uh, read there. Or say, for example, if it's something really burning, I would go for stock tweets to see what is Chris. people are talking about, about right. that, just to okay. get a feel of it. And uh, of course, our group has a lot of information too. People right. talk about it, they share news articles. If it's really interesting, I will look for it. But that's how I keep a, keep a tab of it. I would not go for like 100 of stocks, even though I have a 100 particular, um, 100 pick of stocks mine um, in my profile, which should not be the case. But uh, that's how I started. So I, I, I start with few and then keep on adding on it. So in, in short, like you have a sector that you get interested in and then you find a stock that is pretty much not noticed within the sector. And then you try, you look at the comments and then you see how the behavior is changing towards that particular stock. And uh, you basically hop on it, not with full portfolio, like not 
portfolio, not with the full position size, but part of your position size. And as it goes down, you sell uh, in future. Right. So comments. Uh, just, 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 um, just for my perspective, um, I would not pay much to it. Even the articles, I would not pay much to it because, to be clear, I read news about that particular stock whenever it comes in. Say, for example, I I read the news of the stock. I don't read the analysis of the stock because analysis is best mostly. Okay, so some would be good, some would be bad. So I don't pay attention. There are thousands of art articles or uh, analysis about Tesla, which could go bad and thousands of articles, which is good. So I don't pay attention to it. So when uh, when picking a stock, I read the news, basically. Okay, let's take say, Tesla. So I, I, I have Tesla in mind. Should I enter now? Okay, what is the news? So news is there is a Berlin Gigafactory probably coming anytime soon. They submitted all the articles, all the paperwork. So it's coming out new. So that's one news, which is good, positive factor. Number two, and there is an Austin factory. And then there is something re- uh, about the batteries that's going to come. These kind of news. So these are news. These are not analysis. So I pay close attention to these news and then keep and piling on it. So and then if there is something, okay, FSG is increasing price, would it be good, bad, those kind of stuff, or cyber truck delays. So those kinds of news I accumulate, and then I will go from the um, picking um, to buying, actually. Got it. So the, the, the whole strategy that you have explained, I think it makes more sense from a stock standpoint. And um, now my curious, the, the biggest question here would be options. So let's um, take a step back and listen from you. How, how did your options uh, journey start in uh, March 2020 and uh, how did you progress through it? And what are the differences that you have observed between trading stocks, buying accumulating stocks versus uh, which the options, which is a complete contrast uh, to the stocks and to what you have been doing because it's an in and out game and you have to be fast, you have to be quick. So could you just um, help us understand how was your options journey? Sure. But before that, I actually, I, I should have uh, um, talked about some general concepts as well. When, when sure, it, sure. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. We'll, we'll switch to options later. Go ahead. Yeah. So even before stocks, so I think I should have started with this one. So when we are entering, unless we know how a stock market works, unless we know what cash we can enter, we should not be doing options or stocks. So that's the basic and general idea. So I was, uh, I attended a session like uh, two, two and a half years before by a CPA, he's, an, he's a professional stock trader and his advice was excellent. Um, I still follow that. Whatever that your investment plan is, okay, it should not be in stocks alone. If stocks is good, but it has, the, it has its own risk. Every person has to analyze what kind of risk that they can take. And then say, for example, if my per, if I have $100 as my income, after spending my necessities, if I have, let's say, $50, and I plan to invest $30 for my future, I should enter only 10 or 15 in stocks. Rest of them should go to something else. It should not be stocks because we have a lot of stocks exposures, we would not be able to handle them all. Unless you can financially manage, you should not invest all your um, investment in one basket, which is stocks. Uh, Even your 401k goes, or if you have something else, everything goes into the stock market directly or indirectly, which which is the main source of investments for most of the people. But you should be looking for alternate investments as well. That's the first piece of advice that I got. And still, it's a very good advice. I still, if I have $1,000, let's say, I would first focus on like, okay, how much do I have in my stocks? Am I doing good? Do I have to invest now? Uh, what kind of market are we in? Uh, is it too low, down now? Should I really invest to see uh, something up in two, three months? Or should I wait for another six months to see whether should I enter because I'm not doing good? So all these questions has to be asked by own before entering the, before bringing in funds. That's one basic thing. Second thing is. Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. 
No, my question there is like, other than stocks, what are the other sectors, um, places that you, you, you have learned to invest? So you're saying like, don't invest everything in stocks. What are the other areas that um, one can invest uh, no, not to, their money in? Right, not to everybody. Say, see, if, if you are comfortable, it's, it's the individual risk, right? So I will talk about the options risk at later point. So uh, that will answer this question. Uh, mm-hmm. in, in, in addition, but again, it depends on the individual. Say, for example, I'm, I don't care about my money. If I have, uh, I don't know anything and I know only stocks are only, I, I'm ready to risk them all. If your answer is any of these, go ahead. So you can invest whatever that you want to in stock market, whatever numbers you want to, that please go ahead. But you should be clear that you made this decision that you are ready to risk. But other options are real estate, gold, or um, some some other places. Say, for example, if you if you are uh, if you have a family abroad, so you can invest there as well, like diverge market, so Indian market, see if you can find an option. But real estate, gold, a uh, little bit in crypto, all these are your options as well. I see. Okay. Got it. But really, I wanted to get into uh, bonds and uh, securities and all those things. Um, but I have limited knowledge on, or zero knowledge, to be frank. So right. I, I, that's that's another option too. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Okay. So um, is there is there any other um, areas you want to cover before we move to the options, uh, Shrikant? Uh, no, I think uh, that's that's the main thing. So don't be 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 very careful with what you are investing. Um, yeah. If you are investing, be be plan plan with your investment uh, profile or the amount that you are going to bring in. That's that's the key. Uh, yeah. Got it. Okay. So um, switching to options now, and um, let's quickly go through your options journey from March 2020 to your ups and downs in options and um, your final strategy that you are using right now. Um, to give to to catch these multi bagger calls and puts that you have been giving. So let's dive into options and if you could just um, uh, touch base on how how it, it all started. Sure. Um, I started options on how it should not start. So basically, I was following a person who was expert, uh, who I thought is an expert in options, which right. is not the case. Right. You're not alone there. You're not yeah. in there. <laughs> so that's that's the case. So the, I started the same way. So following a person, individual, okay, is not a good option in stocks a little. Uh, you can follow in stocks, but it's not that uh, dangerous in stocks compared to options. But options, it's very dangerous. I say this because... Um, when I'll tell you in reason, say, see, for example, I have success and I have failures. Uh, let's say I have 10% success. I have 90% failures. That's the case with everybody. Everybody success has success rate and failure rate. So people look at the success rate, but they don't focus on the failure rate. If people who are closely following me know what kind of trades that I failed in, the multi-baggers will compensate my failures. But uh, I started the same way. I was following somebody. He was he was doing in and out very quickly. I was not able to do the same amount. So basically, I was trying to mimic, but I could not do the exact tra- strategy that 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 person was doing. So I went with something more risky uh, with with whatever that I had at the time. So all these things burnt me a lot. So at some point, I said like, okay, fine. So this is not going to help me. I'm not going to follow anybody. So I had to start my own strategy. So what did I did? So how did he pick the profile? So I started reading his profile, Um, um, his calls, his picks, what he's doing, how he's doing, what is the basis of it? I could grasp a little bit on that, but still it was not helping. Then I asked myself, like, do we really need to go to that options? And then I found out that, okay, if my picks, my stock picks can give me 600, 700 percentage of returns. Some of them are. Um, um, uh, I have some of them which I started, uh, say, for example, CROX. I bought my cost price average is $30. So when that stock can give me 200 or more percentage of returns, 
then why not option? So basically I went with the stocks that has a solid base to it. It might fluctuate depending on the market or depending on a particular day news, but it would not go dramatically. So that's my starting basic base point of it on how to do the options. Then I slowly picked up what are the best things that I can do in order to make my stocks profitable. So basically options is nothing but news. Um, when stocks is fundamentals, I would say options is just news. Um, it's based on what that particular day or what is going to come in one or two weeks. So expect that uh, fluctuations in that so that you know when to enter, when not to enter. So basically, I would not give you the exact strategy, but I will tell you the logic behind on picking the stocks. The reason why is if I give you the exact strategy, it may not work, it might be in a problem again. So the logic behind this, if, I, if you want, I can give you the details, but again, so the logic behind this, uh, if I know something is going to happen or some news is going to happen, same like stocks, I, wa I watch the news for options as well. I know what's going to come in 30, 15 days or next week, next hour, next day or next month. Based on that, I define my in, in entry as well as exit. Most of the times I would also be um, stuck with some uh, money needs and th things like that, which may not be, I may not be able to buy it. So I would say, okay, this is not my cup of tea. So I would say, okay, fine. I, I know this is the best one, so but I cannot enter now. I don't have the funds, so I will not mimic. Or if somebody suggests me, I if I know for sure this will succeed, I will enter. If I know for sure this will be good, I will try to enter. But I would not try to replicate anybody because their potential and their success is different and my plan my potential is different so i watch the news and based on the events or news that's going to come out i pick an option call or put so that's how i um, that's how i plan I, um, I think we covered how you pick your options and uh, it's pretty much like you you anticipate some news and um, you kind of react to news you anticipate the news um, if we have to take a step back and look at one of your days Let's just say on um, this Wednesday, the 19th of January, 2022. So if I have to take a typical day of yours and then break it into step-by-step -step process, for example, and see how you deal with your day in terms of trading options. So how does your day start like? Like, do you open like once you are Set once you're uh, near your desktop, you would open um, Seeking Alpha, and uh, that's where that's how you start your picks. Seeking Alpha, you mean? Is is that what you? Asked? No. Yeah. So how how would you start your day? Like how would you pick an option for that particular day? Like you open Seeking Alpha and you start reading the news, or how does it work? Sure. Um... So I have my own picks uh, a week before and I keep a track of it. I know what strike price at what date I'm going to enter. What strike price and what date, whether it's a call or put that I'm going to enter, I keep a track a week before. I know um, that. So for example, if I have an even say ER, right? So if an ER is coming, if I know if that year is going to come next week, I would uh, see, okay, is this the right week to enter? Well, I'll wait for it. No, if not, then I will the next week, I will go for it. So same thing. So 18th, let's say 19, if I want to enter. So so for let's say Monday, right? So coming Monday, I, I start my day. I know what picks that I'm going to do. I have a list of mine to enter on that particular day for that week or for the next two weeks, whatever the time frame is, based on the news. So like I said, so I, I, I keep a tab of the news about a particular stock, right? So in that way, when I know, okay, this stock is going to have some kind of changes of some kind of news, I will enter that day so that I know that, okay, this is the option price and this is the thing. But again, I, I keep a track of what I'm going to buy, 
for at least um, for the next 10 12 days so if if you don't mind um, do you have a list already prepared for the next one week like for example for the monday jan 24th 2022 do you have like one example of which stock you're gonna pick and then the reason behind it if you don't mind yeah sure so this week i already have all my picks that i want to um enter into options um so say for example i have four call options tls cpng chpt XM, PLTR, LAZR, these are my call options. Why call? Because market might go down. Is it a good idea? I don't mind. So I, I'm not going to do anything um, tomorrow for this. I'm going to go long for this one. I, I, I bet on these options because I know it's going to uh, go up. At some point, and uh, I'm not going. I'm not afraid to add if if need to. Like I said, so that's the same strategy that I used to use, used to follow for stocks as well. So options, long options. I forgot to mention about this in stocks as well. I would take a minute on the stock picking on the data that's available in the things side. So uh, March sure. 2020, you asked about this one. So how do you how the change journey journey changed so, and things like that. So. When I don't have a lot of information, I go by news. Uh, it had success and failures. The best thing happened to me is like back in 2020, I was introduced to things of my friend. So that's when I started looking into the institutional buys, the hedge fund buys, what's happening with that particular stock, who is buying, who is selling. That gave me a, another level of confidence on uh, on on to go whether uh, on a stock or even option when i say options how uh, institutional buy can help me what's happening recently are they going to go big say for example the tls xm if you look into the C or cpng for that say data so if you look into the website these three has very good increase in q3 why not in q4 so it will happen in q4 as well because these so what is the nature? TLS is very hot, but no, just because of last earnings, it was not good, it went down. So that's one of my pick for my future options. So for my next earning, or maybe down the lane, another after two, three earnings, that might go to a level which is which was in there before, because the institutionals have bought that recently in Q3, and it might be there might be, there is increasing increased trend on that as well. So that's my pick. So that's how I keep a tab or I keep a list of what I'm going to buy tomorrow. And then I have some puts for the earnings. Again, it goes back to the news. Say for example, um, uh, Apple, right? So everybody's darling is Ab Apple and why not, right? So that's the company which is keep on breaking all the trillions of uh, dollars into their uh, bank. So um, so it, it will go good, but um, it, I I feel that okay it might not do well in this earnings. That's my guess. Why? Because I see there are a lot of supply chain issues. I see a lot of things, but it may go a different way because analyst push for Apple is always high. So that's a risky play. But I'm ready to play for that. So that's how I keep a list and that's how I have for the next day. So I won't prepare on the day. Sometimes based on that immediate news, Pete on, I just picked it on when I hear the and when I heard the news and then I picked it. But uh, Netflix last week, Netflix options or uh, other options, I know that there is something kind to come, either uh, earnings results or something related to it. It may not be exact thing. So uh, if a semiconductor is doing good, the other semiconductor would also do good, right? So that's how it goes. So I pick options based on that as well. So that's how you keep a list. But again, it's not on that day. I keep at least a day or two or maybe even more than a week. Um, I'll be prepared to enter. So you basically follow the news and then you pick some stocks. You have them on your watch list. And then once you started looking at the reports on things, Sabio, you also have a double confirmation that what the news is saying in correlation to what the institutions are buying is actually matching. And then that's when you actually have a solid list of stocks that you think um, that you will buy. 
is, is yes. that is that a correct okay exactly so exactly. but so when you buy or sell for example um so when you when do you pull the trigger i know you have a history of a stock based on its news based on the things have your reports based on the institutional buy and sell you you formed an opinion on a particular stock but when you pull the trigger on the day uh, how do you place your trade like would you just go pick a time or how, how do you basically pull the trigger how do you click the buy what is your uh, basis there sure people say not to buy stocks or not to trade first one one and a half hours of uh, time because it's more it's the it's the fluctu the fluctuating time but uh, that's how if you see that's how i mostly trade and some sometimes i trade a little bit later and sometimes i trade at the end of the day but uh, the end of the day is a recent habit that i generate just that I just um um started but um early day when the market goes up and down when it's fluctuating a lot i i i take that risk i know that it's not advisable and people say not to do that but that's when i do because sometimes just because of the news it might hit a bottom which is a very good entry point so you never know when you be really when you believe so yeah, i'm not entering some random stocks right so i i i'm not entering based on some uh feedback that uh, say for example facebook has security issues right so it might plunge 10 15 dollars is it good actually it's not security issues because of say facebook it's something else so that news clarity would come into a uh, picture little later if i have that in my list say for example okay this is what i wanted to buy and this has some downtime that time i will buy it similarly when i plan to sell it i have a percentage basically it's 100 i don't sell anything less than 100 percentage i don't want to um I, because i'm taking a lot to that kind of a risk i am i'm i'm ready to take 100% or ready to lose 100% that's that's my way of doing it which is not good so but again so since i'm not so technical on the stop loss and other things and i burnt my fingers on those things i'm still trying to understand and learn better to do that let later point of time but now it's just 100% or zero that's that's my strategy so i will wait for that particular stock if it hits low i buy it i'll buy one which i know is going to hit how do we know what is the level that has that the particular stock has gone and what do you forecast from the news that's going to come so based on these two factors i determine the strike price so what it's going to go most likely it will go that's why i'm getting 100 percentage on that sometimes it might so, fail mm-hmm. it might fail and so then i will yeah yeah go ahead. one question then strike i'm sorry um how do you anticipate a news on facebook or anything how do you know that there is a news that's going to come ahead of time because usually from what like most of the people see they they see a news once it's out how do you anticipate a news how do you know like this week they are going to release a news or tomorrow they are going to release a news is is there a is there any way or a database or a, or a web portal where you can go find it or how, how is that going to work it's 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 just natural um, vishwa uh, how do you expect it's because market is mostly manipulated um, <laughs> meaning you would expect a news when there is when it's close to earnings and uh, based on the previous earnings you have to keep a lot of tabs in it i probably i might be throwing too much of information but again say for example netflix i i know again again because of my own uh, we all feel right so what if if it doesn't happen so that factor made me not to buy too much i was about to buy a couple of more puts on that day not calls but unfortunately i stopped it because of my financial things and also of course my own security reason so but uh, last earnings they were hesitant and from last earnings i expected a huge drop last earnings it did not happen it went up to like 700 or something so i know that's not a level it's going to stay it cannot sustain on that level just because of squid game this is exam this is a very good example let me give this example i think this would help uh, understand what my logics behind are so netflix last earnings should have fallen because their subscriber growth is not going to be super good for this quarter or coming quarter what they did just because of squid game 
they their uh, stock went berserk so it went up to 700 levels which is not sustainable for netflix so i was reading the news they were struggling to get it they changed the they reduced the price in india because the competition was so huge this was happening this happened last month so what happen, what's going to happen the stock is going to come down after the earnings that's the first point of trigger it happened last earnings it happened last month we know that it's going to go down Th- that my guess again it's just a guess so those two news are my reasons for initial put then recently just before two or three days before they raised the price for us and canada which is not sustainable because they want revenue and i saw the news that if they don't increase it they would go out of market would you believe that would happen for netflix that kind of a news then i looked into it and say that they don't have subscribers because they have to raise their money in order to create new shows which is not so good news for new for netflix my third confirmation so all this made me think that okay it would go to at least 450 level but but i took a risk of because i had my options for february 25th so i took a options because if it drops after earnings a lot of downgrades will happen and it will go further down that's why my initial expectation that it would go to 450 level after uh, earnings and at some point it will reach 410 that's my expectation that's why i had a 410 as my uh, level so how yeah, do you yeah, expect it has basically crushed yeah So it has basically crushed everything and went to like as low as three uh, seventy nine. Yeah. So it's basically two earnings results were combined into one. To to be clear, actually last earnings should have been fallen, the stock should have fallen, and then this earnings uh, it just accumulated on what's uh, pending last year, last year. So in short, you don't just randomly pick based on the day news. You basically have a list of stocks. 10 20 i don't know i'll get to the number but you basically go through the history the revenue streams the profit and loss recent events everything basically pretty much everything from several months you don't just randomly buy something you basically watch it closely closely and when you know it's time you pull the trigger based on time of at particular time in a day or whatever you like and most of the times you're right because you have been tracking them like you said the netflix is a great example that you have explained that the revenue is going down squid games helped them last time um there is no second squid game yet um and then they have increased the prices in india and um they have to increase the prices in us and canada without which they would be in trouble and then you have all of this in your mind you are your bias into the downside and then for the most part when you do this you say you will be right is 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 that the conclusion of how you do things can i can i make that as a conclusion yes exactly just just okay. one point cool. the profit mm-hmm. loss i don't go into the balance sheet i just go on um, what is the current price versus the um, recent event that might cause the stock to suffer I see what you're saying. Okay, so if you, so how many stocks do you track, like the the count of them, if you don't mind? <laughs> uh, I uh, I was a bad uh, stock picker because I have at least two hundred. In order to narrow down 200. to ten stocks, I uh-huh. um, at least if you ask me, I I had uh, at some point I had two hundred and fifty stocks uh, in my profile. and i know okay. each and every single entry price of it or average price of it that's bad that's how bad i was i was just uh, too much uh, into those stocks then i started reducing it you should have at least 20 to 50 to start with and then narrow down okay. um l- slowly to to pick your best uh, that's uh, that's the best way i would suggest but you should have at least 50 stocks to pick you cannot pick 20 and then narrow down to two or three I see what you're saying. So you you say 50 is a sweet spot to have to track, and um, from there you have to narrow down and based on if you are going to have an earnings date or any event, then you basically look at the previous few months history of that particular stock and um, play the direction that you that you like. That's yeah. that's pretty much um, what you do. That's that's a cool insight. I mean, um, that's really 
uh, very cool insight on how you trade. Um, now, I want to touch base on a couple of uh, elements. Now that I think most of us un- like who's listening would have understood the way that you approach it, it's not like a day-to-day basis. It's not like a fraction of like a minute that you take a decision. You have a complete understanding of all the 50 stocks and then you sort them and then you pick few stocks that you 100% are sure, at least according to you, that the price action is going to go in one or the other direction based on its previous news, previous earnings, you know, what what made them go up, what made them go down and all of that. That's, that's a very great insight. But I want to touch base on one um, main sorry. item here is your... Go ahead. One second. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. So just to add to that, that's 90% of my mm-hmm. strategy. I have one more thing, um, mm-hmm. uh, which is uh, I, I seeking alpha is just for news. I, I wherever I get free source of information because I don't want to pay. But unfortunately, now most of the news are are being um, um, subscription models. So I, I subscribed for seeking alpha just for the news part of it. Another source of uh, information or another source of my stock picking is Finviz, F-I-N-V-I-Z. Um, that I use as well. I mm-hmm. use that for a immediate turnaround as well. So I again, I have my own list, but I know a particular stock, whether it's, it's a good stock or not. Say, for example, mRNA. Is it a good stock? Yes, but is it a good price? No. The valuation is too high and then it's too negative if it drops down. So that kind of stock fluctuates a lot. So for that, I use Finviz for quick trading. Uh, I look into Finviz and see what that day it has gone up or down. If it's a good stock, I will buy a call. If it's a bad stock, I will buy a, uh, if it's a bad stock that has gone up, I will buy a put. So that's a quick turn on. That's a just another Would you mind uh, um, sharing that particular uh, screener if you if you want to share your screen um let me share it just so we look at that um, screener it, it's coming up yep i see it now okay this is another source of information unfortunately it's all uh, red um, but again this is this is not how it will look like um mm-hmm. so here uh, normally, most of them in one direction and only one of them will be in other direction. In this case, say for example, Abbott, right? So it has gone 9.9%, right? That will be, if you look into it, this green, which is 3%, right? And this red is minus 3%, which is, say for example, PayPal, Amazon, Netflix, Visa, all these are close to deep red and some of them in blue, but normally it's, see for example, UNP, it's 1.76 percentage uh, increase on that particular day. But if it's more than two percentage, if it says three percentage and that hike is just temporary, I'll go for a put. And if it's, say for example, PayPal, PayPal is not a good stock for trading now, but unfortunately it used to be. So if PayPal drops 5% or even Netflix drops 5% or Amazon drops 5%, you just close your eyes and buy a call for that week or next week. That's a quick turnaround strategy for uh, for quick turnarounds. It, this has a lot of, lot of risk factors in it compared to the regular strategy, but this one is because Sometimes, not sometimes, 60% of the times it has worked, um, but uh, it depends on your risk um, um, digestion. Uh, let us say, yeah. So this is a map for the S&P 500, is, is that right? Yes. Okay, so basically what you're saying is when you have like pretty much green and then you have one stock that's down like 5% without any news or anything as such, you basically go opposite. So if it drops like three, four percent, you basically buy a call for a couple of weeks away, and then it's more likely going to happen that it will turn around and do a mean reversion kind of thing, and then you you capture that hundred percent profit there. Is 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 that uh, does that yeah. summarize what you're saying? Okay. Yes, not hundred okay, percent. This one won't work hundred percent. This is just a pure risk play. So I would not wait hundred percent on this one. I'll uh, I'll just turn around quickly. 
I see what you're saying. So um, for the listeners, we will um, place the link for this uh, FinVisual screener in the description of the video, so you can uh, uh, check it if you want. So, uh, so you have basically two strategies. The 90% strategy that you use is you basically watch a stock closely, you watch the news, you look at the things have your reports, look at the institution counts, you track every single move of the 50 stocks or 20 stocks that you track closely. You know their move, you understand their behavior because you will travel with those stocks day in and day out uh, when you have time. And then when it is right time, you know how to pull the trigger, when to pull the trigger, you do it. And um, the 10% is what you have shown on the FinWiz screener where you would pretty much do a mean reversion kind of thing on the stocks that you know are strong, but for some reason they have a down day. And then you will do the opposite of what it did today. If it goes down 5%, you'll probably buy a call a couple of weeks away and um, you will pretty much scalp it for 20, 30% or whatever that percentage is, right? So these are the two strategies that you basically use. Um, and uh, are there any other strategies um, that you use other than these two? Or the, I think this summed up to 100%. Yeah, mostly this is that um, sometimes I um, um, I follow other people as well. When uh, Venu or Nagesh or uh, Dhananjaya throws an idea or somebody, other, mm -hmm. other people also, when they, they, they throw an idea, um, is it good? So I try to... Within the Things within Abia group? Within the okay. Things Abia group. So I'll try to trim it to my personal needs and see what's best. And uh, if, if I really like that idea, I would definitely go for that as well. I see. So would that, should that idea fall within the stock that you track or would you deviate from your list? If, for example, if Venu comes around and says, um, you know, uh, Moderna, for example, but you are not tracking Moderna, would you take the trade because it's not in your list that you track? You don't know history of, the, of that stock, for example. Would you still trade it or would you just pass it? 99% I won't. Uh, one percent I will, okay. um, because one person I do because of the current trend and the news that I'm hearing around the sector. Probably, say for example, okay. DFS. He shared me, uh, he shared us the DFS idea, so which I took. Uh, that's because the mm -hmm. sector there was a banking sector earnings happening, and then there were a lot of fluctuations happening around that. So I took that idea. Um, but mostly I don't deviate because I don't know when to exit. So again, the same rabbit hole situation that I, I've been telling not to follow others, I would be in the same situation. So I don't do that. Right. I see. Okay. So you only stick to the stocks that you have high conviction, good knowledge. So let me, let me switch uh, the topic here a second, uh, because this is, this I believe is one of the important so let's talk about risk reward and portfolio management um, in terms of percentages. So you said the 90% um, uh, game that you play is, you know, you know the stock um, and then the risk reward there is one is to two, right? You're ready to lose it all, but then you will not sell it until it hits 100%. That is for the options. So if your risk reward is one is to two, what would be the position size in terms of your portfolio? For example, would you take that position with 1% of your portfolio or would you, would you take it with 2% or 3% of your portfolio? How would you balance uh, the portfolio management and the risk reward that you have, which is one is to two? Sure. So before that, uh, before going to the percentage of the options that we do for the risk reward, I would split them into two major. So when you have a profile, I would not suggest options for all. I would not suggest 100% options for all, definitely. Uh, what is mean? So if you are not sure, start trading one or two, which is just 1%. Um, but if you know options, I would still recommend only like 10% of it or 20% of it. My, or if you go, like I said, so the initial thing that I said, as long, it, it's up to the individuals, if they are willing to take the risk, they can do whatever that they want. This is just for the people who are not aware and who, who, are, who want some planning perspective. I would say do 30% or 40%, because even if you lose on all the trades, right? That's, that's not going to happen. But even if you lose all the trades because of a market situation or something else, 
you would still have something in your stocks that will recover and pro give you profit maybe in 2023 it's not going to harm you but if you trade them all it's going to be a risk i i i was hesitant to more go go more than 10% of my profile into options but unfortunately now i'm in 30% 30% of my um, value in my portfolio is is in options and 70% is still in stocks but most of the stocks is down and then you don't get that percentage so that's how i would uh, i would define my profile first but again it's up to the individuals then again going to the 100% reward like i said there are there are two ways right so the reason why i keep keep it uh, till the last minute is because not all the stocks have failed till the, have failed 0% there are a lot of expiries for me as well I'm, i i don't um, say that i it, it did not happen to me um it happened to me a lot of expiries because it's my own failure of when to sell it um so i just not have time to look into it to sell it or probably i uh, this week i would have said like okay i would sell it next week but unfortunately next week that was not in my focus those were some of the reasons that it went zero and sometimes it's it never came up and it was uh, just my overconfidence that uh, that till the expiry but most likely the ones that went to 90% have fetched me 200% returns so that has happened to me so so, so, so keep it... one question there is like when you say your options are expiring worthless that has to do something with the strikes right so how do you pick your strike when you are entering do you buy at the money or do you buy out of the money in general sure um i generally buy out of the money because i i first of all my profile is not so too big so i cannot afford to do that i i just keep on rotating that's why um, mostly out of money i don't want to unless i know for sure say uh, people would have uh, seen me spend too much in tesla adobe and lrcx um, those were some costly options that i entered but other than that i would try to, i know the news right so i know where it's going to go say for example netflix um so i i probably would have gone for 470 range it would have fetched me more but i would do two or more say for example one netflix and one something else so that i even if i lose on netflix uh, i would get on other things so i would go out of money to the nearest possible value that it can go based on the based on my guess thank you okay got it so um you're saying you're 30% into the options and um you're saying one is one is to two or you know sometimes it's more sometimes it's less um the active options that you trade for example um the one that you showed in the finviz how how do you use that like how much percentage of your portfolio would you use for that scalping mechanism there um i would not go much into it it's highly risk because say for example um uh if we say that okay netflix has gone down it will go tomorrow no that's not the case right so like i said that's a, that like i said it's a riskier option you can take a risk if you have some money you just throw it so but again i would not do too much of that uh, uh, immediate uh, turn around things it's it's it pays off uh mostly um or at least 60% of the times but you have a larger risk of losing them everything so i would uh, do a less on that uh, rather than doing the planned one for more understood so if if there is a new guy who is listening to this chat he's like fresh into the stock fresh into options but he is really inspired by the way that you have been trading um and then your calls and my understanding today is that there is a lot of groundwork it's not it's not like a one week thing two week thing you have to track something for months to be able to form a bias on the direction right um if there is a new guy who's listening to this um particular recording how how what are the things and how are, how can he um come to a point where you are and uh, is there any um I know you said seeking out I know you said things have your reports um is there like a few steps that you could um, help so um they can follow those sure 
I would not start with options. Number one, I would not follow anyone. I would follow people for their ideas and see what they are doing. Try to understand their, what they are doing. So I will start with stocks, pick a stock. If I'm new, I would definitely not go to options. If I am in stocks, I know how a stock works, when it goes up, when it goes down. Yes, stock pick is most likely you would get success. Most likely, okay? There are failures as well. I'm not going to talk about it. That happens every, every to everyone, even to Warren Buffett, right? If I follow Warren Buffett, will I be success? No, uh, people easily can follow and can be multi-billionaires, right? No, not that, that, that did not happen. What is that they are doing? Why is they doing? Same case, the exact thing, the institutional data, right? Why a particular person is keep on accumulating a stock? He knows the market. He knows that it's going down. So he has a reason. That's the institutional data. That's a very basic thing that you should know in order to find out which, is there anything that's going to be happening in the stocks? That's your future. So start with, uh, start with stocks. Understand how it's going to go. Then see if there is any related news that's going to come. If What is, what is the company is go, going to do? Say, for example, LSER. LSER, TLS, uh, these companies were the, the uh, XM. The people have added it recently. What is there anything going to happen? Yeah, uh, there might be some LSER, say, for example. LSER has a tie-up with NVIDIA recently. And that day, it went up. That, after that, it went down. Now it's like almost to the IPO price. So is it good? Is it bad? There is a possibility that this might be taken over. Um, there are a lot of things. I, I bought Activision Wizard like that. So I know that it, uh, it went half of its price even before this market crash. So I know there is something that has going to happen. So I, when it was 56, 58, I guess, I bought it for 62.5. I got 100%. Then I sold 62.5 strike price. Uh, which is uh, very close to that current price. And then I bought a 67.5. What I guess what? It was bought by Microsoft or at least the news came out. And then I got like super hit on that particular option. So start with, start with the action stocks, follow the news. So you would know when to enter onto the options following on people's advice. So one thing there is, what, are there any instances where you have anticipated a news and bought an option, but then there was no news and um, the, the stock went sideways and it got expired. What place? Are there any instances as such? Many, many. Um, like I said, okay. so initially, the people look into the success, right? People don't look into the failures because right. uh, the success, right. success mirages the failure, right? So I have a lot of uh, options like that. That, But see, you 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 asked a very good question because that's very important too. You cannot be success in all your trades. If I say that, I'm a fool, and uh, it's not going to happen to anybody. Anybody who is doing options will have failures. I told this in the chat group chat as well. Yes, pick is successful only if market helps. It's not because of my uh, pick that it will be success based on the analysis or data that I have. It's how the market helps a st stock that become a success or failure. Netflix, ATV, take any example. Because the news helped in the market helped it. So it. I have, to answer the question, I had failures. But the point is you don't use, don't stop there or you should not stop there. That's why picking each of the options or stock in different sectors is very important. And trying again with whatever that you can, not, not out of the way. Please understand that you cannot keep on adding if you are not successful. If you don't know, take a pass and then come back at a later point. But if you can, just go on that particular thing again. Say, for example, JP Morgan helped me. Target last time helped me. I Even now, I have a part target price. Target went to 215. I bought a 230 uh, strike price. It came to 230 and then it reverted back to 220. So I, I'm going to, I added a 230 again to, um, on Thursday, I guess. So if it comes to that 215 range, again, I am going to add because I know Target is not going to be Im impacted by the inflation. There are other companies which might be, but Target may not be that much impacted. And for that earning time, 
it will come to easily 230 so i will sell it so to answer the question yes there are a lot of news expectations that i believed it did not happen amd recent one um, I thought that the uh, extension of uh, the deal with uh, Zillinex would not uh, be approved by China and then it will uh, fall down. It did not happen, but it fall on based on the market reaction. So there are happens, but the thing is you should not stop there. You should believe in your uh, understanding. And uh, if it's really bad that you are failing on everything, stop there. If not, you just keep on trying. So basically have an edge and um, have the probability game in place. So if you're right 50%, if you're wrong 50%, you're still in the game as long as your um, risk reward is one is to two or one is to three, you'll probably make profits. And that, that's probably the summary. Exactly, exactly. So if you see for the last um, two, one or two months, market is going down. All my calls were uh, almost expired zero. I did not sell it. Um, that's why I did not post it. I sold it because I'm not going to sell it. I'm going to keep it. And then I, I, I don't mind selling it for zero. I don't uh, because there is no point in it. Um, but the right. problem is I keep it for a reason as well, because when it turns down, you never know which is which one is going to help. It. So I will keep it that way. But again, so all my multi baggers help my losses reduce a little bit. So it's not it's like right. more loss, no loss or no gain. I'm just playing the game. I'm happy for that. Exactly. Exactly. And that's probably the most important thing is to stay in the game and make sure you don't blow up your account by increasing the position size or taking a risk that we cannot afford. That's that's the key point. So um, going forward, how do you see your uh, trading journey and the learning curve um, go from here? What are the things that you want to add into your tool set and how do you want to improve your um, trading journey in options of stocks. Yeah. So I'm actually in the transitional phase. Um, I believe more than options, stocks is the sustainable and the future investment. So especially in the stock investing, option is going to gain something um, on that particular day, particular week, but it's not going to gain you all the times. You, you, you should convert your option profits into stocks. That's my strategy. And uh, that's what I'm do. I'm trying to do. Unfortunately, I had a lot of options. Uh, I had a lot of stocks. I sold it. And then I'm uh, doing options a lot now. But I'm trying to get into a good um, set of stocks and then keep on adding it and not look at their daily fluctuation or monthly or yearly or six month fluctuations. Uh, when I didn't speak profit, I might take some, but I'm going to build my profile. So that's my transitional, uh, that I'm, I'm that transitional phase. That's one. And uh, how I'm going to build my future, basically technical uh, charts, uh, definitely want to learn from you and other experts. That's one thing I'm really looking forward to it. Unfortunately, I have zero time. Um, it's It might sound odd, but uh, I'm so busy, spammed up so many things, but technically learning some things might help a lot. Uh, especially my uh, entry criteria, uh, exit. I'm don't. I don't. I'm not worried about. But entry criteria, technical charts, and other uh, things are very important. And also uh, learn from a mistake. So currently, I'm learning from a lot of mistakes. So if I know that it may not fetch, I should not keep it for long. So I I, I believe on a particular thing a lot. So I should reduce that and then um, not do that. I, I don't have any sentiments to the stocks or even my profile. Even my profile goes zero. I don't mind worry about that because I can start from the scratch and I will uh, know how, how not to trade. So that's my philosophy So about that. But uh, there are a few things like um, selling it with uh, 20, 30% sometimes should also be in your play. Um, that's not my case. So those were something that I'm trying to think so that I don't end up losing a lot. So. Understood. And and um, thank you so much, Shrikant. I think uh, for the most part, your your um, calls and puts um, decisions have been fantastic. I, I know like there are many people who who took those trades and um, they, they kind of took some knowledge from you. They're definitely going... Do you have um, any advice that you want to give before we wrap up the call um, to the traders? Like you said, um, you want them to trade the stocks instead of options. Um, are there any like last piece of advice you want to give uh, before we wrap up the call? 
Sure, Rosha. So just to summarize, I, I, I mentioned whatever that I learned so far, but um, um, so I'm not an expert. So people, uh, people who are listening or um, want to follow, please understand that I'm not an expert. I'm just a human with a lot of doing a lot of mistakes. So I may not be right all the time. You can uh, build your own strategy. Don't put everything in your one investment options like stocks. Try to spread it. Limit your option or stocks so that you are not losing uh, your good chunk of future investments. Uh, have a plan on when to exit, when to uh, enter. Uh, never ever compare yourself with others. So my profile is not yours. Your profile is not somebody else. So I I do what I can afford to or what I can take risk of. But please don't do because it's hard earned money. Nobody wants to lose money. So be careful with that. And also uh, my best piece of advice, try to understand what's happening in from your perspective and then try to do that. So that might go a long way rather than um, following something else. So these are some things that I learned hard way. Um, I'm still learning, but again, um, these are some I learned so far. So I'm trying to um, ask uh, any followers to, to do this one. Awesome. Thank you so much, Srikant. You have been really, really a great contributor to Things Have Your Community. And thank you so much for taking time or weekend to share your insights. And um, I really wish um, your trading journey will go much right. And um, good luck, man. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Vishwa. It was nice talking to you. And it was a great opportunity to share whatever that I know.